Hello there YouTube. We're going to do our best to explain how we're going to hook our equalizer to our receiver amp and add an optional AM FM tuner, which would just be like if you're adding a CD player or something. We'll save that till last. Okay, this is the back of the equalizer. I'm not going to explain this because I don't know up my head right now. Here is the line in and out for the equalizer, okay? We're going to be substituting yellow for white. That's just what I have for cords. I bought those cords really cheap. I'll put it in the description where I found that stuff. A couple dollars a piece. Go in the store and I want twenty some dollars. I'm a cheapskate, I buy the cheap stuff. <laughs> hey, it ain't fun, I don't want to do it. Okay, this is the back of the equalizer. Do you want to ask what this system control was? I think it was some kind of remote control years ago or something. Something was added to this. Excess system control, we'll just ignore that. This is the basic line in and out, okay? Now when you go down to the receiver, this is an insignia, uh, it's probably five years old. I went back in, they had one that wasn't made as good as this a year later. I got lucky. This one I think, it's 200 watts peak. It is a good receiver. The radio doesn't work. So if you look in here, you have VCR, auxiliary, CD, DVD. We're probably going to use auxiliary for radio. I do have a CD, DVD player, but I'll put it on CD because I'll be using it for CDs. Okay. You have a record. You have this. Okay. This is preamp out and in. What this means is, okay, in this stereo before it hits the amp, it comes out of the preamp. Pre out. Pre always means before, before it's amplified, okay? These are just little peg things, which we'll take out of the way. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come out of the preamp, okay, of the stereo, before it's amplified in the amplifier. Okay, when we come out of the preamp, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and come line in to the equalizer, okay? So we're taking the radio, uh, radio or whatever we're using on the stereo, we're, let's just say the radio, even though I'm not going to use the radio portion. Let's just say I got it on the radio. We're going to come out of the preamp portion here before it's amplified. We're going to come in the equalizer. Red is right, white is left. We're just going to substitute yellow. You'll see in the picture at the end. Okay, it's going to go through the equalizer, it's going to perform its functions, it's going to come out equalized, okay? Then we're going to come right back into the amp in. We'll go over it one more time. We're going to come out of this before it's amplified. We're going to run the stereo tuner, say we're on FM, radio. We're going to run it up here. Whatever comes out of here, it's going to go into the equalizer. That's why that's line. This is old school stuff, but people may have this stuff and this may help them. We're going to come out of the equalizer, we're equalize it, play with it, do all our fun stuff we do to make the mid-range, bass, all that stuff. If you've never seen equalizer, uh, old school, well, you'll enjoy one of my videos on that coming up. Back out of the equalizer, into the amp in, so it's amplified. When you're not using that function, that's why this is jumpered across. This has a built-in radio, built-in amp. It just came out here and came out. It's nice to have this. When I bought this, I made sure I had this function or I would not have bought this stereo. $75 on clearance. It was probably a couple years old or something at Best Buy. Insignia is what they sell. Uh, fairly decent stuff. It depends on the manufacturer. I think they're out of Minneapolis. No, Richfield, Minnesota. Uh, depends on the company, how picky they are. Some stuff comes from over China is pretty good. I didn't like the radio in here because it's about the size of a transistor radio. It's a piece of junk. It sits right behind here. There's a chip on it. One of the balances didn't work because it was all scratchy. And then finally it quit. Nothing wrong with the amp amplifier portion. I don't want to get sidetracked too far. So I explain that pretty simple. Okay, now say you want to hook your CD player up, or my MP3 player will go in CD. I will probably put the DVD CD player in DVD. That way it's easy to remember. 
So if I'm playing an uh, MP3 player, it shows up CD on the front in the display. And I do have a chord which I'll show when I do that. I just have to come across it. All it is is has two of these on it. It goes to the little 3.5 millimeter earbud plug. You can make these. You can take a set of earbuds and find two of these that you can solder on. You can split one of them earbud things and make these. But the wires are so small, you almost can't solder them. They will burn up. Uh, I'm going to take a jack. Maybe I'll make a video where you take a jack out of a radio to where you plug in your little earbuds and you make a little box. That'll be an easier way to make a make video of how to do that. Because you cut the end off them earbuds or that cord. It's pretty particular. But you can go buy a cheap cord with that 3.5 millimeter plug. You can go buy one of those plugs. These are easier to splice because you take it apart. So you can go buy that plug and hook it to two of these. You may have to have a little box because there's not much room in the plug. But that's how I'm going to do it. I just have to go get one. Okay. So we covered that. Now the tape, maybe somebody knows that right off. Uh, I know when you run a tape player in here, you could run it in there and have it equalized. Because it says tape, record, and play. I'm assuming if I run my tape recorder into here, run it back out on play, or vice versa, I'm going to be able to equalize my tape player. I've never done that. I don't have a manual for this Kenwood equalizer. But I think we covered it, and then we'll show it one more time when we have the wiring hooked up. So that's what will be next. Okay, we substitute yellow for white. You can see over here, this would be white, left side's white, red is right. See the way you remember, red is, red is right, white is what's left. That is what we did. We came out of the preamp. You know, that might be hard to read, preamp and amp amp. We came out of the preamp. Here's the coil wire. These are like six foot. Went into the equalizer. We come out of the equalizer. Big coilies are like six foot. Came out of the equalizer and went back to amp in to amplify it. So that's what we did. We came out of here into the equalizer, which is a line. It says line. That's later line in or out. Equalized it through the equalizer. Bring out the signal, the radio, the radio station, whatever. Put it back into amp in to amplify it. Okay, now this over here on auxiliary, again we're using yellow instead of white. This is an input from auxiliary, which is input from this little Mitsubishi tuner. Antenna connections, etc. Uh, like these outlets, I'll throw in there real quick. I may hook this to the output of this or whatever. I really don't like doing that, but I've already got two cords coming out, and I wish there would have put an output on this. I would only have one cord going to my power strip. I suppose I could use a three-way drop cord. I thought about doing that. If I can come across a drop cord with three uh, inputs, your little drop cord, I'll hook them all to a drop cord and go to my power strip. I'm going to try to find one. Less mess. This will all be balled up behind here. Uh, my antenna wires. I'm going to have them hooked out first. I use a piece of coaxial cable to insulate it. Uh, I'll just have one on FM and one on AM. A little piece of scrap cable. Uh, if I can find one of these real quick. Sorry about bumping the camera there. I'll show real quick. If you want to use a piece of coaxial cable, I use 75 ohm a lot. Okay. Strip it back like this. If you do decide to ground something to experiment, you can always shove a paper clip in here, inside the insulation in the braid. But this is what I'll use because I'm going to be running across my shells. I don't want bare wire. I want to. When you use that, you're keeping the signal inside here. It's not trying to pick up any interference or antenna. This doesn't act as an antenna when you're just using the inside of it. And I've had that in other videos. So I'll have a couple pieces of this running across. I have to move it over on my thing. 
But you get the idea. It took me a little figuring. Do not throw your plugs away. They will go into my part supply cabinet. They was in a box of cables and stuff that I'd ordered. It was an empty box. I had them put away. I'm glad I found them because I was able to work on this and run it without having the equalizer. Otherwise, I just had to run a cable in and out. If you do lose them and go back and don't have equalizer, you're just going to have to take a cable and do the same thing. You have to come out with your cable and just put the other end of your cable back in here. Same as jumping across. These don't have to use the ground because most everything, every one of these outside these is ground to the same spot. Not all of them. Most of them are. That's the only reason there's no ground on these. This was a problem with this. I'd had this up on the big shelf up there in my shop, up there towards the roof, and I kept losing balances. These have got uh, gray, dull, corrosion coating on it. So I actually went inside of here and scraped and cleaned that the best I could with a real small screwdriver, blew it out a little bit of air. And I seemed to correct the problem because I'd used this several days, no problem. This can only hook two speakers to, but you can always double up. Uh, I may have four speakers. That's kind of a shame because I like to hook. I would like to have hooked up to have speakers on my desk or up above, but I don't get that choice unless I want to make some kind of little speaker box in the future where I can flip over to different speakers. I had had one once. Uh, wasn't ready for a lot of wattage though. It was kind of a nice little idea. It came from Radio Shack. You could hook like four speakers to a two-speaker stereo, uh, select A or B, little realistic box made probably in the 70s. It was a nice little item. I don't know what I ever did with it. Nice little item. It was a nice little box. You could hook up more speakers in A, a or B, A and B plus that helped people out to hook more speakers to the older stereos. You notice how big these banana plugs are? Recommended 8 ohms, class 2 ohms. This thing pumps out some power. I never believe anything. It says 200 watts. That's probably peak. That's crank. That's the highest little peak on some of the notes of the music. But I know it pumps out a lot of watts. But my speakers have a 35 watt circuit breaker, so you'll trip it if you get carried away. And I've just left it that way so I don't blow anything. Because the tweeters, mid ranges, aren't very big, even though the 10 inch woofers are rated at 150 watts. I'm not going to hook. I could modify the speakers, maybe someday I will. Uh, this will be going straight to the woofers, and the rest will be on a circuit breaker. So if you trip the circuit breaker, you're just going to trip your mid-range and tweeter, and you're not going to hurt the trip the woofer. If you blow them up, oh well. I may do that, because I like to crank it up sometimes, and it has tripped the circuit breaker in the speaker. So the woofer's in there. If I did, I'll make a video of it. How I just go in and bypass circuit breaker system and just hook straight to the woofers and you can still add a fuse I don't know what fuse to add two or three amp you still can put an inline fuse on there in case something happens uh, if your speaker is worth more than your stereo it'll blow the fuse instead of frying your speakers if stereo is messed up they put too much voltage out it fry your speakers you, you should have some kind of protection on all your speakers they do make such things they do make kits that I can build I think I covered that. Don't know if it's be a long rambling video. But it gives you an idea if you come across this old school stuff, how to hook it up. So I'll include where I got these cables at. You can buy them for a few dollars a piece. It's worth your time to fill out the order blank, order it, even if you do it by mail instead of on the internet. Most people order off the internet now. You go in a store and buy one of these cables. Last time I checked, I know it was twenty some dollars. These are a couple of dollars a piece. There's nothing wrong with them. I have one from MP3 player, and the only thing I found out with that was the colors were marked wrong. The left balance and right balance was different because I checked it with my earbuds because I hooked up something one day, and a certain song I was playing, like, that sounds weird. Uh, they had these mismarked, so I would just flip them around. And that was only $2 to hook an MP3 player with these outputs. But I plan on making a video to show an easy way to make one of those adapters out of that plug. You take a plug, you go buy a plug, go to where your earbuds go, and you just splice these in the plug. If they don't fit, you can make a little box or something. So, it's pretty simple to make your own, because those are spendy too. Those were, I've seen one that was, I know it was more than $30 in electronics place, just to be able to pay, play your MP3 player. So, sure, this has been a long rambling video, but,
It might help somebody. This is old school equipment. So thanks for watching.